isa pong pinagpalang araw sa ating lahat, mga kapatid, at isa pong uh, isineselebrate natin sa ngayon ay hindi lamang ko yung kapaskuhan maging yung pagdating ng bagong taon. Kung di higit sa lahat, we celebrate, we celebrate life. Because life is the greatest miracle that God had given to every person every time we wake up in the morning. A new life, a new day, a new strength given to us by God para masilayan at matuklasan, makita ang mga dakilang bagay na kanyang ginagawa para sa buhay ng bawat isa sa atin. Ang magising sa panibagong araw ay napakalaking blessing. In spite of the situation, in spite of what we're going through, life is more important than all the challenges or problems that we encounter in this life. At ang maganda po rito, kasama natin ang Diyos habang ating kinakaharap ang bawat hamon at pagsubok sa ating buhay. Ang sabi po sa Isaiah 43, ano ang sabi, dumaan ka man sa ilog ng problema o pagsubok, hindi ka malulunod. Dumaan ka man sa apoy ng mga hamon sa buhay o problema sa buhay, hindi ka masusunog sapagkat kasama natin ang Diyos. The most important thing that a person, whether he is a believer or not, all people on earth should secure one thing, especially as we enter this year, 2024, and that is none other than the presence of God. Let us secure the God factor in our lives. Kasi po, ang labanan this year or next year it's not about what ability you have. It's not about how good and how uh, uh, how good you are and uh, how strategic you are. But it is all about who is with you in the battle. Sino ang nasa sayo? Sinong kasama mo sa labanan o sa pakikipaglaban sa buhay? Sabi ng Bible sa Romans 8.31, For if God is for us, who can be against us? Sa ibang translation, if God is for us, who can be? No one can be against us. Mga kapatid, nawa itong ating paghahanda sa pagpasok ng 2024. Hindi lamang excited tayo kasi maraming opportunities, but most of all, we need to prepare ourselves spiritually. We need to be established spiritually. We are mindful and we are Focus on how to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because at the end of the day, only those who are strongly, accurately built in the Word of God and live their lives according to what the Bible says, and they treasure the relationship with God through deep intimacy with Him, will survive. They were the ones who will survive and they will, the one, they will be the one to continue in their journey towards their destiny. Mga kapatid, it is very important itong ating pinag-uusapan sa ngayon. But before anything else, I would like to welcome you today sa ating morning prayer sa mga kabubukas pa lamang ng kanilang Facebook. Live rin po tayo ngayon sa YouTube. So please do us a favor to share this message to your friends. Because we will be discussing a very, uh, we will discuss a very important message entitled "How to Secure Our Call and Destiny." I strongly believe that the Lord created us for a purpose, and He had He has created us for a mission, for His vision. Kaya mahalaga ho, la, bawat isa sa atin ay meron pong tinatahak na destiny. At may pagdadalhan sa atin ang Diyos. Pag ang Diyos ang nagplano, napaka-the best nito, napaka-perfecto. At yan ang gusto niyang malakara natin. But the question is how to secure our call and destiny. But before we continue, I would like to invite you to a word of prayer as we offer to God prayers for our brethren and for our nation and even for our next generations. Let us pray. Father God, in the name that is above every name, the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
we come to you approaching you to the throne approaching you boldly to the throne of grace because only in the throne of grace we will find mercy and we will receive grace in times of need Lord tinataas namin sa inyo sa mga sandaling ito una sa lahat ang mga kapastoran mga pastor na naglilingkod at tapat Panginoon na ipinapangaral ang purong-purong katotohanan ng Diyos. We pray for them right now in the name of Jesus that you will continue to pour out your wisdom, understanding, and knowledge, most especially anointing and power so that every word that comes out from their mouth will become a double-edged sword that will cut the heart of the people that lead them to repentance and lead them to, to return to the Lord. I also pray for their needs. I also pray for their families, a good health, long and satisfying life in order for them to finish their God-given assignments. I also pray, Father God, for the workers and leaders in the church or in churches, especially also the members who are supportive to their pastor, honoring him, supporting Him and loving Him and uh, embracing Him in their prayers, I pray that you will bless also more than what they've expected in the name of Jesus. And those brethren, Panginoon, na wala pang mga lupa at building para sa kanilang sambahan, I pray, Father God, that you will release the grace to govern and the power to prevail in order for all of us to possess our own so that we can worship you freely and we can express our praise and worship to you. I also pray, Father God, our next generations, the young people, Lord, I pray na mas malakas ang influensya, Panginoon, ng salita ng Diyos sa kanilang buhay. You said in your word in the book of Micah that you will create a famine, not of the physical food, but a famine to the word of God. I pray na magsimula na po ang gutom na ito sa mga kabataan namin, lalo na sa mga next generations, that they will become hungry and thirsty for your word. They will become lovers of God and lovers of His word. In the name of Jesus, and I cut off and destroy all the influence that the world had inculcated, planted in their minds, in their hearts, and I pray in the name of Jesus that they will not just come to God because they are in difficult situation, but they will come to God because they love God above all. In the name of Jesus, Father God, bless and uphold, protect our next generations in Jesus' most powerful name. Father God, we also pray for our spiritual leaders. Uh, Lord, uh, mula sa... Uh, mga pastoral movement papunta po sa national na leadership, Panginoon, Christian leadership. In the name of Jesus, I pray for the unity of the body of Christ. Those who possess a personal uh, agenda, Lord God, you will frustrate them and you will only give success to those who are pursuing and advancing the kingdom of God and the agenda of God for the unity of the body so that the Lord will be exalted in the lives of God's people. We also pray for the dispute, Panginoon, sa Pilipinas at sa China, dyan sa West Philippine Sea. You know who is really the owner of those of that territory. Father God, it belongs to the Philippines. And we just pray for your divine intervention for in this uh, scenario, Lord God. And we believe that you're a just God and you are just in all your dealings. Let your uh, righteousness, Father God, be implemented, especially in the case of the West Philippine Sea. We also pray, Father God, in Jesus' most powerful name, the economy of our nations. I pray, Lord God, that you will continue to bless, Lord God, the, uh, the business sector, Father God, even the the our political leaders from the president down to the uh, simplest member or the, uh, of those who are serving our country. 
In the name of Jesus, I pray for the fear of God to uh, rule and reign in their lives. Use us, Lord God, your church, to share with them the truth of God's word so that the fear of God will be established in their lives. I also pray, Father God, in the name of Jesus, yung aming mga dagat, yung aming mga kalupa, lupain, ay magiging healthy, magiging, uh, magpaproduce ito ng maraming pananim, magpaproduce ito, Panginoon, ng maraming mga yamang dagat para hindi lamang ma ma ma-fulfill at matugunan ang pangailangan ng Pilipinas, kundi kami rin ay makapag-export upang ang ekonomiya ng bansang ito ay lalo pang tumaas. And Lord, we come against Join me, mga kapatid, as we come against the spirit of corruption, spirit of uh, division, spirit of murder, the spirit of rebellion, spirit of idolatry. We destroy you all in the name of Jesus and we come against you. In the name of Jesus, which is the name above every name, bow down to the lordship and kingship of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Father, I pray the spirit of truth, the spirit of righteousness, the spirit of holiness will govern this nation starting from your church down the line, Panginoon. Lord, I pray ang paglilinis ay magsimula sa iyong mga iglesia. I pray, Father God, that there will be a revival that will going to happen, revival in the Holy Spirit that will going to happen sa bawat churches so that every church will be purified by the Lord beginning, Father God, sa mga leaders down the line, sa pinaka-simply, simplest member para, Panginoon, ang iglesia ay handang-handang magministeryo at magliwanag upang ang mga taong nasa kadiliman ay maliliwanagan at makalakad sila sa daan ng Diyos. Panginoon, dalangin ko rin ang lahat ng mga karamdaman sa mga sandaling ito. Karamdamang physical, karamdamang spiritual. We pray for your divine healing right now in their bodies and even in their spirit. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing right now in Jesus' most powerful name. I also pray, Father God, those who are in need, seeking for job. In the name of Jesus, Lord, as your sons and daughters, we believe that you've already prepared for us the best blessings, the best destiny, and the best things are, are now coming to your sons and daughters. But Father God, help us to trust in you without a shadow of doubt because you deserve our 100% faith and 100% trust that you are faithful to your word as what you've mentioned in Numbers 23.19, ang Diyos ay hindi sinungaling katulad ng tao. Ang kanyang sinasabi ay kanyang ginagawa at ang kanyang mga pangako ay kanyang tinutupad. Purihin ka, Panginoon. At sa mga sandaling ito, Lord, dalangin ko rin na, maang pagka, uh, na kayo po ay mag-create ng uhaw at gutom sa aming mga spirito, sa aming puso, sa aming isipan, sa iyong mga salita at sa iyong banal na presensya. Dalangin ko ang bawat isa sa amin ay lumakad sa katuwirang kabanalan at lumakad, Panginoon, sa Christ-likeness. Because there is no other way for us to overcome. There is no other way for us to be victorious but to live like our Lord Jesus Christ. At Panginoon, dalangin ko rin sa pasimula ka sa pagawakas ng aming pag-aaral. We just pray, Lord God, that you will open the heavens and pour out wisdom, knowledge, understanding, anointing, and power so that as we study your word, as we explore the word of life, it will not just give us wisdom, but it will also give us life and it will uh, establish and, and empower our spirit so that whatever we do, whatever challenges we're going to face, we will be more than conquerors through Christ our Lord and King. Come on, open your mouth and begin to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I also pray for the... Uh, job of your sons and daughters. I also pray for those who are doing business. I pray that the Lord will bless you in a very special way. I pray that the Lord will also release uh, the best blessings that He had prepared for you, especially this year, 2024. This is the year of uh, special blessings and abundance. And I also believe that this is also the year of an ever, ever increasing glory. So prepare yourself Okay, not to receive the blessings, but prepare yourself 
to be established, to be to be rooted, to be to be deep in the Word of God, in prayer, and our intimacy with God. I pray also in Jesus' name, Lord God, that you will bless our babies, those who are sick, will be healed. And Lord, yung mga kapatiran na mayroong dinaramdam ngayon sa physically, I declare and release your healing in the mighty, almighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for the blessing that you've released to us today for our healing and miracles. We thank you, Lord, for your uh, blessings that you've released to our nation, the Philippines. We thank you, Lord, for the fear of God na yung nire-release sa buhay ng mga leaders mula Panginoon sa judicial, sa, sa executive, maging sa judiciary at sa legislative. Lord, I pray that all leaders in the land will possess the fear of the Lord so that this land will experience transformation. I also prayed for the church to be united. The church will, will move as one. The church will advance the kingdom as one. And those who, have, who possess personal interest will be frustrated. And those who possess the heart of God, the vision of God, advancing it to the world, they will become the, 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 the light bearers. They will become kingdom advancers. And they will change every place or places that uh, that they will uh, that they can that they will uh, that they are welcome to present and to preach the gospel. Salamat po Panginoon. We give you praise and we give you honor. Come on, begin to receive your blessings. Begin to receive your healing. Begin to receive your miracle. Start praising God. Start worshiping the Lord because God is changing the landscape in the spirit. Okay, the Lord is just changing the landscape in the spirit. He is now opening the heavens for those who are faithful, for those who are obedient, for those who are hungry and thirsty for His Word and for His presence. The Lord is shifting the landscape in the Spirit towards our favor. There are things that the Lord had prepared for us for a long, long time, but this time the Lord is about to release it. Pre be, prepared, be prepared to receive your portion today in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus, we receive our portion, O Lord. We receive, Father God, the blessings and the empowerment in the Spirit. We receive, Father God, our miracles in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen and amen. Palapakan natin ang Panginoon. What a powerful day and what a powerful time. Okay? Starting the day with God. Praising Him, praying to Him, worshiping Him, honoring Him. Napakadakilang araw. Ang isang araw na sinimulan sa Diyos at sa salita ng Diyos. And if you are, if, if you uh, join me sa prayer na yun kanina, receive your portion. Receive your healing. Receive your breakthrough. Receive your miracles. Because our God is a miracle worker is our way maker, is a miracle worker, is a powerful God. Okay? And uh, you can only receive your portion if you release your faith without a shadow of doubt. And the moment you receive, what, just as what the Bible says, okay, the centurion, sabi ng Pahinom, pupunta ako sa bahay mo para pagalingin ang alipin mo. Pero sabi ng centurion, I'm not worthy, Lord. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. Mga kapatid, this kind of faith amazes God. At kailangan po tayo ganun din. Wala man sa kamay pa natin yung ating sinasampalatayanan. Wala pa man sa kamay natin yung ating pinapanalangin. But because we believe that we have a powerful God who can do and make the impossible becomes possible, begin to release your faith that it is already in your hand to give you a scripture, a very clear scripture in Mark 11, 24, whatever you ask for in prayer, believed that you have received it and it will be yours. Sa Tagalog po, ano man ang inyong hinihiling sa panalangin, manalig kayong na tanggap na ninyo ito at matatanggap na ninyo ito. Ang prinsipyo ng mundo, to see is to believe. Ang prinsipyo ng Diyos, believe and you will see. Start believing now. Start claiming it now. Start receiving it now. Start uh, living according to it now because the Lord will going to do something powerful in your life. Galaw-galaw natin ang ating mga katawan at uh, 
atin pong i-declare na tayo pinagaling na ng ating Panginoong Heso Kristo. Jesus is our great healer. Praise God! At sa araw na ito, tayo po'y magsimula ng isa pong bagong series sa ating morning prayer, How to Secure Our Call and Destiny. I strongly believe na tayo po ay uh, nilikha ng Panginoon for a purpose because our God is a God of purpose. Ayon po sa Romans 8.28, it says, For we know in all things, God works for the good to those who love Him and to those who are called according to His purpose. Our calling and destiny is always aligned to the purpose of God in our lives. But again, uh, as long as we are here on earth, we have an enemy called the devil. As long as nandito, sa lupa, nandito tayo sa lupa, we cannot, uh, we cannot expect an easy fight. Because once upon a time, the devil is uh, in control of this world. But when Jesus came, he, destroys all, he destroyed all the works of the enemy. And uh, he entrusted the works. Nung siya po'y umakit na sa langit, nakaupo sa kanan ng Ama, interceding for us right now, ibinigay niya ang gawain ito sa church. And the church will now be the one to destroy the works of the enemy and to set the captives free. That is why, ginagamit ngayon ng kaaway yung ating laman para magiging contact point para tayo sa halip na lumakad sa spirito. Ang mga mananampalataya ay pilit pa rin pinapalakad ng kaaway sa laman. Kaya napakahalaga ho na maunawaan natin ito at kung anong kaharian tayo nagbibilong. Mahalaga po yan. Do you, uh, which kingdom the people of the Lord belongs? So, the challenge we are facing every day So, every day of our lives, there are challenges. Okay? Wala pong permanenting victory. Mayroon lang, isa lang ang permanent challenges in life. You know what I'm saying? Sa lahat ng aspeto, magiging spiritual, emotional, physical, financial, material, lahat ng yan, mayroon tayong challenge bawat araw. Kaya it is a, a dream, ano? You are daydreaming if you are expecting a life that has no challenges every day. Every day and we're facing different challenges. Now, let me read to you Hebrews 12, 25-29. To, to begin with, it says, See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, how much less will we? If we turn away from him who warns us from the heaven. At that time, the voice shook the earth. But now, He has promised once more, I will shake not only the, the earth, but also the heavens. Verse 27, the words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken. That is created things. Okay, what are shakeable? Created things. So that what cannot be shaken may remain. So the purpose of shaking in the life of a believer is to remove the unshakable, to remove the shakeable, so that the unshakable will remain. Sa lang pong ibig sabihin yan, para mas mabilis nating maunawaan, remove, ang purpose ng shaking ay alisin sa buhay natin ang mga ginagawa natin na nasa sanlibutan lamang, ang interest, ang lahat ng ginagawa natin o karakter natin na hindi po sangayon sa kalooban ng Diyos. These are shakeable things. Putting our confidence to ourselves instead of putting it to God, aalisin din ng Panginoon. Yan ang purpose ng shaking. So, pag sinasabing shaking, it doesn't mean na may naalis na, nagkaroon na ng shaking uh, last month, aba, okay na, pastor, uh, na, na, naintindihan ko na, niremove ng Panginoon yung ganit, itong bad habit ko, niremove ng Panginoon itong uh, karakter ko na hindi, na hindi pleasing sa Kanya. Pero, laging tandaan, makinig na buti, mga kapatid, there is a word once more. God said once more. I will shake the heavens and the earth. Because hanggat nandito tayo sa lupa, yung ating mga weaknesses, yung flaws ng buhay natin, ay hindi po yan nawawala. At alam ng Diyos ang kapasidad mo at alam din ng Diyos ang kalalagayan mo kung ano yung mga nagiging hadlang sa buhay mo. Watch, watch me now. If there are hindrances in your life, in your walk with Christ, then expect God to remove it. And the only way for God to remove those inaccurate ways, inaccurate habits and character is through shaking. Nagkanoan tayo. 
Kaya kung kayo po nagkikinig sa'yo ngayon, mayroong shaking sa buhay mo, may inaalis ang Diyos na hindi mo kailangan sa buhay mo para manatili yung kailangan mo lang. The words, once more, indicate the removing of what can be shaken that is created things. Mga bagay-bagay lang, salibutan. So that what cannot be shaken may remain. So nagets nyo na po, mga kapatid. Maaaring iba sa inyo kasi you, you are now tempted to ask questions. Lord, bakit hindi na matapos-tapos itong problema? Bakit hindi matapos-tapos itong paghihirap? Ano bang meron? Ano bang dapat kong gawin? The Lord is simply telling us all today that He is just removing the things that we do not need so that the things that we really need might remain in our lives para hindi na po tayo una ma ma malilito, hindi tayo makukonfuse kung ano dapat natin gawin. Pangalawa, magiging laser focus tayo doon sa pinapagawa ng Diyos sa atin. Hope and, hope and pray na clear sa inyo yan. Okay, verse 28. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, hallelujah, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. For our God is a, is a consuming fire. So good news na dapat malaman ng bawat isa, we belong to an unshakable kingdom. Yes, there will be shaking in the world, there will be shaking in the economy of this world, but praise God because our citizenship is in heaven and we belong to heaven, an unshakable kingdom ruled by God. So our economy is in heaven, our security comes from heaven, our supply comes from heaven and praise God because heaven never runs out of supply. At ito po ang dapat malaman, katotohan ng matagal nang naitago at hindi nalaman ng maraming mananampalataya. That is why many believers are frustrated with their faith. Why? Because they're still going through hardships, but the, the Bible says that God will be the one to provide for them. But sabi ng Bible sa Romans 32, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. You are a kingdom citizen. Therefore, your economy is in heaven. Your Provision comes from heaven and your protection comes from heaven. So while we are here on earth, yes, we are in this world, but we are not. We are in the world, but we are not of this world. Do you understand it now, mga kapatid? Now, sa may pasok sa verse 29, Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe. What, what should the people of God do? We need to worship God now that we belong to an unshakable heaven, to an unshakable kingdom. Anong kailangan ng gawin? Be thankful to the Lord. Whatever happens, give thanks. Okay? Give thanks at all times because this is God's will for us in Christ Jesus. Ano pa? Worship God. When, about, when you speak about worshiping God, honoring Him in everything we do, not just worship, it's not purely singing, not purely playing instruments. Worship is... In everything you do, you give God the glory. In everything you do, you exalt the name of the Lord. Pag mayroon ka bang ginagawa yung mga tao, pag nakita yung ginagawa mo, bumibilib sila sa Diyos, napaparangalan ang Diyos dahil ikaw ay nakilala nilang tunay na lingkod ng Diyos, tunay na nagmamahal sa Diyos, at nagre-reflect yun sa ginagawa mo. That is worship. Truth yan, mga kapatid. Because ang worship na confined sa religious mindset na awit lang, kantahan, Okay, ano pa? Sayawan, ano pa? Tugtugan. Isang form lang yan ng worship. To prove to you, I'll give you a scripture, Romans 12.1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to God, which is your true and proper worship. True and proper worship is living for God. Malinaw po? It's not singing alone. It's not playing alone. It's not playing instruments alone. It's not dancing alone. It's living for God. And play, playing instruments, singing and dancing, is just one form. Maraming paraan. If you're a husband, then be a godly husband to your wife and your children. If you're a wife, then be a godly wife to your husband and to your children. If you're an employee, then be an honest and be a, a, an excellent employee. If you're a, uh, a student, then excel. Be the head, not the tail. Be at the top, not at the bottom. Yan pa worship. Ano pa? Acceptably with reverence. Reverence simply means the fear of God. Fear God. 
revere God, respect God to the highest level with awe. Ang reverence natin may kalaki po na pagkamangha. Bakit? Because our God is a consuming fire. If you will study the Bible carefully, God wants to purify our thanksgiving. God wants to purify our worship, our understanding about worship. God wants to purify and continue to increase our reverence for Him. Papapansin ninyo, the Lord is not concerned more on our needs on earth. Why? Because the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Everything on earth and everything, the, the whole earth belongs to Him. Kaya nga po, pagka mayroon pong tamang presentation ng gospel, nare-realign at nare-adjust ang ating mindset, ang ating understanding that things of this world is no longer our problem because God is the owner of all things. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Romans 11.36, For from Him and through Him and for Him are all things. Nagkakanuhan tayo. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So what does it mean? Any or every name, every need that we have on earth, God is able to provide. So ano ang dapat gawin natin bilang mga mananampalataya? Thank God. Magpasalamat sa Diyos. Sa lahat ng bagay. Ano man ito. Favorable o hindi. God is able and capable to turn the table into our favor. Worship God. Pinaliwanag ko na, ang worship, hindi lamang pagkanta, pagtugtog at pagsayaw. Ang worship ay ang mabuhay at gumawa sa Diyos sa lahat ng panahon para sa Diyos. At pag may nakakita, ang mga tao ay nagpupuri sa Diyos dahil sa nakita nila ang gawa ng Diyos sa pamamagitan mo. Ano pa? With reverence, with the fear of God. Ang sabi ng Bible sa Ecclesiastes 12.14, Therefore, in conclusion, Fear God and keep His commandments for this is the whole duty of man. When you speak about you fear God, you revere God, you have reverence for God and awe. Bakit? Because God is a consuming fire. Gusto ng Panginoon, nag-i-increase palagi. Yung pagbabago natin, araw-araw nag-i-increase. Yung pagsamba natin, pasasalamat natin, pag pagkaroon natin ng banal na takot sa Diyos, pagrespeto natin sa Diyos, pataas ng pataas. Hanggang isang araw, Lilingon na lang natin at atin na lang titingnan sa baba yung mga pangailangan natin. Ngayon, baliktad. Maraming mga tao inuunang pangailangan, hinuhuli ang Diyos. Yan po ang pinakatrahedya sa buhay ng isang mananampalataya. Because the Bible clearly states that you seek God first. You seek first His kingdom and His righteousness at ang ganda ng pangako and all these things at tinutukoy na these things are the things that man needs to survive and to live a life of blessing and abundance in this world. Now, number two truth that we should know is our enemies are spirits. Yes, there are challenges and battles in life, but you should know who you are fighting against. Ephesians 6, 10 to 12, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in, in His mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. What I'm trying to say, mga kapatid, know who you are fighting against. We are not fighting against flesh and blood, against people. We are not fighting against any person. But we are fighting against the spirit who control, who lead, who lead that person to go against us. Malinaw po, mga kapatid. Every challenges na dumarating sa buhay mo, lalo na pagtapat ka naglilingkod sa Panginoon at alam mo na sinusunod mong salita ng Diyos, pero mayroon pong mga atake sa iyo, it is not the doing of any person but there's a, an evil spirit doing, uh, uh, orchestrating it, using people who are immature and using people who are not deep and rooted in the word of the Lord. Mga kapatid, dapat clear to. So, paano natin ma-overcome ito if we are fighting against rulers, against authorities, against powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces? Sabi ng Zechariah 4.6, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. 
Who's that spirit? God, Holy Spirit. And God, Holy Spirit is deposited by God in us. At ang sabi ng Bible, greater is He who is in you, God, Holy Spirit, than the devil, than the spirit, or than He, the, sp the, the devil who is in the world. Mga kapatid, kaya ang tawag sa atin, more than conquerors. Because we have God, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit lived or resided inside us. Truth that we should know. Okay? Gusto ko pong maunawaan natin ito, mga kapatid. Ano ba ang dapat nating malaman? Truth that we should know. Ang sabi po rito, okay? Truth that we should know, we cannot win. Okay, that we should know we cannot win the fight with our own strength. Dapat alam natin yan, mga kapatid. We cannot win the fight with our own strength. We need to operate in the power and strength of the Lord. Let me repeat. Truth that we should know. We cannot win the fight with our own strength. The devil doesn't care whether you're a graduate at Harvard, you're a graduate as an exclusive school, you are the most brilliant student, or you're the most, uh, you're the most brilliant person on earth. He doesn't care. Because anything na galing sa laman, hindi uubra sa kalaban, sa spiritual. But the moment a person living in the flesh, but being... Uh, resided, who carried the presence of God, the Spirit of God, then that person is a powerful person and is a dangerous enemy against the devil. Kaya we cannot win the fight with our own strength. Stop relying on your own strength. Stop relying on your own ability. Stop, stop relying on, on yourself because you cannot win the battle against the enemy because he's a spirit. You are just a, a, a physical being. We need to operate in the power and strength of the Lord. We need to operate by the leading and the empowerment of God, Holy Spirit. Because the Bible says, not by might, nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord, that we shall overcome. It will be impossible for us to fulfill our call and destiny without God's help, God's grace, and God's divine power. The key to our victory is the God factor within us, which is God, Holy Spirit. That is why, pag wala po tayong masugit at talagang malalim na pag-aaral sa salita ng Diyos, pakaisipin lamang natin, ay ako'y dadalhin lang ng Panginoon sa aking destiny. No, no way, my friend. It will be impossible for us to fulfill our call and destiny without God's help. That is why we should not be independent and we should not be self-dependent in fulfilling our call and destiny. We need God's help. We need God's grace. What is God's grace? God's power and ability working in you for you to become what God wants you to be and God's power and ability working through you for you to do what God wants you to do and God's divine power. Why? Because we are fighting against evil spirits in this place called earth. The key to our victory is the God factor within us. That is why the devil is trying to, you know, uh, deceive people by offering them uh, worldly things. They're offering them worldly uh, strategies, worldly system. Nagkaunawan tayo, kaya sabi ng Panginoon, as a verse 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern, to the system of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you carry the presence of God. You can, you can ask God for help. The grace of God is available for us. Just come and uh, approach boldly to the throne of grace. And most especially, God's divine power is available for us. That is why we need to, the key to our victory is the God factor within us, which is God Holy Spirit. We can only secure our victory if we accurately align our lives according to biblical principles to guide us as we journey towards destiny. Papapansin nyo, papasok na tayo ng papasok doon sa pag-aaral natin. 
We need to be guided with biblical principles in order for us to win every battle that we face. We can secure our victory if we accurately align our lives according to biblical principles, not man's principles, not man's uh, strategies, but only biblical principles to guide us as we journey towards destiny. Hindi po nagkulang ang salita ng Diyos para tayo po'y gabayan, papunta po sa fulfillment ng ating assignment at fulfillment para makarating tayo sa ating destiny na inihanda ng Diyos para sa bawat isa sa atin. Kaya nga ho, sa isang mananampalataya, the Word of God, the Bible, played a major role for His victory and for His uh, fulfillment to, her, to His God-given assignment. Without the Word of God, para kang isang treasure hunter na walang mapa. Let me repeat. Without God's Word, para kang treasure hunter na naghahanap ng kayamanan na walang mapa o walang compass. Because the Word of God is our road map. The Word of God is our compass towards our destiny, towards our victory. Now, truth that we should know in securing our call and destiny. Number one, we should prioritize to work out our spiritual maturity. If you want to know the truth, what the Bible says, okay, for you to secure your call and destiny, number one priority is we should prioritize to work our spiritual maturity. Second Peter 1, 5 to 7, it says, For this reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. Mga kapatid, kung inyo pong titingnan, as we mature in our faith, as we mature in our relationship with God, it's not faith all alone. Ang faith po ang siyang foundation para atin pong matanggap Parang faith ang susi para matanggap natin ang kaligtasan. For by faith, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. But faith, okay, ang faith po ay hindi lamang siya dapat tayo mananatili doon. If you mature in your relationship with Christ, you add to your faith goodness. Ang unang bunga ng pananampalataya o ng isang taong sumampalataya kay Kristo, ay kabutihan. Kaya nakakaduda, pag sinasabi mong may relasyon kay Kristo, may pananampalataya kay Kristo, pero magaspang ang ugali, malaking problema yan. At yan ang madalas nagiging daan ng katitisuran ng maraming hindi pa mananampalataya. Add to your faith goodness, ang unang nagiging bunga sa isang taong mananampalataya na ni Kristo, kabutihan. And to goodness, knowledge. Bakit knowledge? Because pag ang isang mananampalataya ay nagkaroon ng, panang, ng pananampalataya kay Kristo at siya nagiging mabuti, may tendency na yung kanyang kabutihan ay maaabuso ng marami, kaya mayroon knowledge. Ibig sabihin, you know people who are sincere and you know also people who are just who just come to you to, uh, uh, there are people who are uh, taking advantage of you. That is why you need knowledge. Nasa nakita niyo po? Faith, you add goodness, and to goodness, you add knowledge. And to knowledge, self-control. Bakit self-control? Because too much knowledge, minsan po, ay talagang nakakayabang. But if you have self-control to keep your peace, you have self-control to, to, uh, to tame the flesh and allow the spirit to take charge. Okay, ano pa? And to self-control, perseverance. Bakit perseverance? Kasi po, ang mag-control sa sarili, yung, pag ang chinalage na yung self-control mo, laging tandaan, pansinin niyo ho, 
Pag ang problema mo at weakness mo ay mabilis ka, you're impatient, padadalhan ka talaga ng mga tao. Ialaw ng Lord na dumating sa buhay mo yung mga taong nakakaasar para yung pasensya mo ay lalong humaba. Ang tawag dyan, perseverance, pagtitiis. Na, napansin niyo yung ano? Para itong ano, ito mga kapatid, uh, ito po ay hindi po ito magsushortcut. Isa-isa po ito ang dagdag. So you are just like building. You are, you are, you are building a, an infrastructure of your Christian life. Others, ang nakakalungkot, nagstay na lang sa faith. As long as they believe that they have faith in Christ, so they just continue living their lives on their own. They just living their lives the way they want to live it. No way. If you want to fulfill your call and your destiny, you need to prioritize your spiritual maturity by allowing yourself, by living yourself according to what the Bible says. So, in perseverance, add and to perseverance, add godliness. Why? Habang tayo ay natuto, lumalim sa pananampalataya, na buhay na mayroong kabutihan, na buhay na mayroong kaalaman, na buhay na mayroong pagpipigil sa sarili, na buhay ng, pag, ng pagtsatsaga sa pagsunod at sa pagfulfill ng salita ng Diyos, ito po'y nagdadala sa atin sa pagiging makadiyos, godliness. And to godliness, mutual affection. If you possess a godly life, then you also possess a mutual affection. And yung mutual affection, it is loving, loving the brethren whether they are good or not to us. At dito po marami ang medyo kapus. Bakit? Makikita mo mismo sa church. Kung sino-sino lang yung mga magkakaibigan, sila-sila lang magkakasama. At kung merong mga hindi in or hindi pasok kasamahan nila, di nila pinapansin. At ito po ay hindi po makadius na paraan. Kasi ang isang mananampalataya na nagmamature kay Kristo at nagiging makadius hindi siya namimili ng kanyang, uh, uh, ng kanyang magiging kaibigan, lalo na sa Christian faith. Okay, ibig sabihin, He loved the brethren because these people are being called and saved by the Lord. So they love the brethren in spite of His weakness. They love the brethren. They support the brethren in spite of His weakness or in spite of His shortcomings. Mga kapatid, Napapansin niyo po ba yung maturity? Bunga ng pananampalataya, kabutihan. At dagdag sa kabutihan, kaalaman. Dagdag sa kaalaman, pagpipigil sa sarili. Sa pagpipigil sa sarili, naroon ang pagtsatsaga. Sa pagtsatsaga, naroon ang pagiging makadiyos. At sa pagiging makadiyos, pagmamahal sa kapwa. Pagmamahal sa kapwa. Maging sino man sila, kung paano ng Diyos minahal ang bawat tao, ganun din magmahal ang isang taong lumalago at nagmamature sa pananampalataya. Ang kanyang pagmamahal na ino-offer sa mga tao sa sanlibutan ay katulad ng pagmamahal ng Diyos. Because one, a proof of a matured believer is godliness. And godliness is able, a godly person is able to love any person in spite of his weakness, in spite of his wickedness, in spite of who he is. Because that is the kind of love that God offered or offers to every person living on earth. And last but not the least, you, you learn how to accept and love the brethren then to mutual affection, love. And the Bible says, 1 John 4, 8, God is love. So, ano may kita natin? The end result, the end product, the byproduct of a matured believer is living a life reflecting, manifesting the love of God, which is God Himself. So, ibig sabihin, Christ-likeness. So, makikita natin, the full maturity of a person is reflecting God in His life, manifesting Christ in His life. Sabi ni Pablo sa Galatians 2.20, for I am crucified with Christ. And I know no longer I, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith. The Son of God who loved me and gave Himself for me. Kailan mo malalaman na ikaw ay naroon na sa maturity sa buhay mo? Kailan? 
when you begin to manifest Christ in your life, you begin to manifest the characteristics of God and yourself can no longer be seen by people. Even you, you yourself, nakikita mo na hindi na nagmamanifest yung sarili mo, kundi ang nagmamanifest na sa'yo ay walang iba, kundi ang characteristics ni Kristo at ang characteristics ng Diyos. Mga kapatid, napakagandang pag-usapan ito. Okay, napakagandang pag-usapan. Ang patuloy na paglago sa paglilingkod natin sa Diyos ay hindi lamang po nananatili sa pananampalataya. Many believers, as I've, I've observed in different places, they just capitalize on their faith. Kumbaga sa building po, ito lamang ay pundasyon at wala pong taong nakatira sa pundasyon. Nakatira ang mga tao doon sa every story of the building, sa bawat floors. At dapat po, mayroong kaagad initial, initial pa lang to ha, initial fruit of our faith is goodness. And as we continue living our lives, as we continue to be kind to other people, then yung knowledge natin about God ay nag-grow. At habang yung knowledge natin ay nag-grow about God, then self-control, we, we can now Uh, we have the we have we can now uh, we are under we, we are now uh, uh, we have the power we have the the, the 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 grace of god to control to to uh, to control the flesh not to commit sin against god ano pa and then naroon na ngayon yung perseverance naroon ngayon yung ating pagtiyaga na kahit anong pangyayari, minsan nangyayari ang mga bagay hindi ayon sa gusto natin, dumarating ang mga bagay na hindi natin ninanais, minsan nabibigla tayo, minsan nasusurprise tayo ba't nangyayari ito, but because we persevere, because we are maturing in our faith, hallelujah, we were able to understand na process natin ang mga bagay, ba't nangyayari ito, ah, dahil ito yung gusto ng Diyos, nangyayari ito, nagagawa ng isang tao na matured na magpasalamat, in spite of unfavor unfavorable situations. And then, doon sa kanyang pagiging per, pagkakaroon ng perseverance, na develop ngayon, na mumold ngayon, yung godliness. Bakit kailangan yung godliness? Bakit? Because there's a big tendency pag ikaw ay naroon sa madilim na yugto ng buhay mo, naroon ka sa mga mabibigat na pagsubok sa buhay mo, there's a big tendency for you to complain, there's a big tendency for you to murmur, there's a big tendency for you to question God. But because you know that it is part of God's process for you to become a good and quality product to be displayed in the world, then yung godliness mo ang nag may maintain sa'yo, nagsasabi sa'yo, just go, just, just trust God in the process because God is creating something powerful in your life. And after godliness, dito mo na ngayon makukuha ang puso ng Diyos. Mutual affection. You have now concerns for people. You have now concerns for others. You are no longer just you are no longer just concerned about yourself. Kailan mo malalaman na nagmamature ka na sa pananampalataya? If most of your concern is no longer for yourself, but it is for God's glory, honor, and pleasure, and for others, nagmamature ka na. And last but not the least, if you have this mutual affection, then it is governed by the love of God. And the Bible says in 1 John 4:8. God is love. Ang pinaka-huling lalabas sa isang matured na believer ay walang iba kundi ang karakteristik ng Diyos at ang Christ-likeness sa kanyang buhay. Ipagpatuloy po natin to sa susunod na pag-aaral natin next Saturday and uh, prepare yourself because we will explore more on what the Bible says. But uh, as we uh, temporarily uh, stop this uh, our study, I would like to encourage you that uh, begin 2024 with God because God is the right starting point. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. If we start with God, then we will finish strong with God because He will be our strength and He will be our power and He will be our provider. Wherever we go, the Lord be with us. Whatever we do, the Lord bless the works of our hands. And your table will never run out of food. There will always be food at your table so that you will be able to share it with others. And the Lord bless you and keep you and makes His face to shine upon you and give you peace. 2024 is the best year for people 
who are madly in love with God and obey His word explicitly, immediately, and accurately. This is the word of the Lord for all of us in Jesus' most powerful name. Amen and amen and amen. Shalom! Save us all, He's Jesus, and it's Christmas.